Hey guys, Kev here, and I have a quick unboxing to do for you. So first, I have a pen. This comes by way of Tai 2 Design, and this is their, um, what is it called? The uh, Tai, no, the Tie Liner. Sorry. And I got the micro one, Super Shorty Tie Liner, I think it's called. Tech Liner, sorry, I'm an idiot. Nice, nice packaging. These are made in Hawaii, I believe. And it's a little pen that has a magnetic cap. Pops on the back like that, and then you can write like this. Yeah, that's a really good size. Very small, and it's kind of fidgety, because you can play with it. And let the cap catch and everything. I guess there's a little magnet inside the uh, back end there, and the tip goes into that. I love that it has a ton of tip exposed which uh, is something that pet peeves me a little bit, or that peeves me a little bit when you don't get a lot. Um, see how we put a new one in. There's a magnet at the back, too. Don't know. Oh, there. So I am not a gel guy, and this one takes the uh, Pilot G2 Mini, and I have to figure that out. I have to figure out a way to get it to... Um, to work with a ballpoint. I have to find a ballpoint this size. I wanted a small pen like this for a pouch I have, and I also just like smaller pens. Um, so let's see, the problem with gel is, I'm a lefty, and the ink smears on my hand but maybe with a small notepad like this it doesn't matter and i can't write I gotta get used to the pen but i also don't like gel because it looks like shit too but that's how it goes, so I like it. It's a little pen. I think it was like 80 bucks or something in titanium. Um, it doesn't feel as cl like clean as I was kind of expecting it to feel a little more know, snappier or... I don't know. That's a weird way to put it. I don't know what I was expecting, but it's awesome. It's really cool. I love the cap design. I love that it basically takes this tiny thing... It makes it a full-size pen, at least for me. So, uh, yeah, I'm digging. Tech liner, uh, super shorty. And that's really the only size I would need. I mean, why do you need anything bigger than this for me? It fits perfectly in the hand. I have a pen that I love, the uh, Nautable from Nottingham Tactical. But even with the cap on, look how much shorter it is. Like, it just, I don't know. I don't need that much pen. Look how much sticks out, right? But getting a ballpoint in... You know, that's the problem. I like the short ones, but getting a ballpoint is tough. So I'm going to figure it out. Uh, my buddy over at Tinker Force told me about how you can cut refills. So he actually just cuts them and they go to size. I might try that. I bought a cutter just for that and we'll see what happens. So stay tuned for that. But that's the Tech Liner unboxing. That was uh, really cool. Tie2design.com. Check them out. I obviously paid for it and all that good stuff. Next, we have a box from White Mountain Knives, and this is, um, actually, let's back up. I have two other ones. Let's just rip through everything I have so I don't have to do multiple unboxings. This is from somebody, I think they're just returning a knife. Um, it's a Kun Wu thing, so I do some of the, uh, I help them with, like, warranty stuff when I can. And I believe this guy just wanted to return a knife. So don't think there's anything else to it. I don't think I'm trying to fix it or anything. And guys, I'm obviously not like a fixer. Fixer, I just um, can help with some things. So this is the compact towel. Seems to be in decent. Oh, okay. Hold on. What's going on? Yeah. You got detent lash there, so I don't know what the deal is. Probably have to take it apart and just see. Uh, maybe the stop pin's 
a little bit off or something, but um, not something I'm going to deal with right this second. That lock bar feels oddly strong. I don't know. It's weird. All right. But that's what happens. If you have an issue, you just hit them up. They might have you send me the knife. Um, and this guy got a refund, right? Um, they would have replaced it if that's what he wanted, but he didn't. So um, there's going to be issues, guys. That's something we're going to talk about in a little bit. But there's going to be issues with knives. It's just how it goes. You can't catch everything, you know. Um, as much as we want to, um, but um, there's going to be issues, and as long as it comes down to how it's handled, you know, and that's kind of the way I look at it, and I don't know why I can't shut this, there we go, all right, so I'm going to keep that there, um, this one is from River's Edge Cutlery, I think this is just from my buddy Josh Worth in Australia, and it's a hardware set or something, rec cloth, yep, it's a hinderer hardware set he was getting, so just something for me to pass along. Battle Black, he's all about the uh, $65, damn. Okay. Anyway, um, put that aside, that's his. And then finally, we have the knives from White Mountain Knives. These are the Sleeper. This is the Canadian Knife Company. <laughs> Sleeper. Now, these are made in China by Shielden Knives. They're the ones who made our knife, the Growler, the budget version of the Growler. And let me grab that. And I noticed that they had dropped these as well. And I just kind of wanted to see comparatively how, you know, how the uh, build quality was and all that. We've had a few people have issues with uh, finishes on the blade and some other things. And obviously, like I said a minute ago, we take care of all those issues. If you have a problem with your growler, you hit up White Mountain Knives and they will take care of you. Um, so while it's not fantastic that you're getting something like that, and that's something we're addressing in the future as well, um, we've done these dealer exclusive deals with dealers to take the heavy lifting off of us because we're working full-time jobs and, um, uh, we're not like paying ourselves or anything at this point. All the money's just going back into Devo, uh, more knives and stuff like that. So, you know, to take all the time aside to QC 600 budget knives is, or, you know, affordable knives is tough. So we wanted to do these dealer exclusives so that it would take some of that off of our plate, QC, shipping, that kind of stuff. And every dealer is going to have their own process. And the way White Mountain Knives works is they just don't have the manpower to QC every knife. So unless you ask on your order, they don't QC check the knife again or when they come into the store. So... With the Growler, there were some that would have been caught had we obviously went through everyone and checked them. Now, like I said, we're going to replace anything, you know what I mean? So if you have an issue, you hit it, you hit up whitemountainknives at gmail.com, they take care of it. And we've done that. Um, we back our products, right? We have some here as well. If anybody has an issue, you, you can hit me up. And um, if, you know, I doubt there would be any problems with White Mountain Knives, but, you know, feel free to hit me up, of course. Um, at Devo underscore knives on Instagram or at lefty EDC info at Devo knives.com. Now in the future, we're going to make sure they all get QC checked before shipping. So whether that's, we do it ourselves and just suck it up and then get them to white mountain, or, um, we hire somebody over there, you know, to check them, figure it out, right? Uh, with Blue Creek Knives and the Mash, Blue Creek Knives, uh, Brian over there is going to QC check every knife. So, um, and any of our premium knives that go through Devo, like our website or whatever, they get QC checked by us personally. So, um, just a learning process, you know, and we're not perfect. So, um, if you guys have any feedback for us, we totally appreciate it. We always take it into account. But anyway, I just wanted to see. So he sent me two of them. This is the Sleeper, and it's the Canadian Knife Company Sleeper, and it's done by uh, Shield and Knives. And this one, I believe, is $100, and it comes in 14C, 28N, and my Carta, just like the Growler does, has a wire clip, which is nice. Um, it is contoured, so I can see why they charge a little bit more for it. And uh, let's take a look. So open this one. I like the packaging. Packaging's nice. 
Um, so right here, CKC sleeper. Here's their information. That's nice to have on there. Adam Gibson is the designer. Awesome. Definitely check them out. They're on multi-row bearings, T8 pivot, assembly, clip hardware, pocket clip, wire clip. I got to say, I do like the wire clip. Uh, 14C, okay. And you... You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Gal 513. Don't know what that is, but I'm guessing it's a Bible reference. Okay, so we got one. Let's check the other. And here we go. So, here they are. Quick check-ins. The micarta is like this blue micarta. It's pretty cool. Um... Yeah, you, know, you got some fuzzies, but that's normal, as is the case with most micarta. Um, centering on this one is a good bit favoring to the clip side. So I don't know if you can see it. I don't know why, but it looks a bit worse in person than through the lens. But um, this one's the same way. So I don't know. I do feel like one of the things that happened with the Growler is that Shield intended to over tighten them a little bit. And if you over tighten, it goes over to this side. So this one's centered, but that could be the case here and we'll see. Um, you have a hole for deployment. That feels great. Action feels good. This one's nice, okay. A lot stronger on the detent on this one. Yeah. Both are good, though. Both are good. And I would much prefer stronger over weaker. You do have a thumb stud, which is kind of nice to have. That's nice. Drop, shake. Yeah, these are nice. I'm digging them. So... Yeah, I'm not sure why. I think he sent me two just for the reason, because I asked. I was like, can I check these out? I'd like to see, you know, Shieldin's other work. And um, he sent me two, so I guess it was just to see the comparison. But um, they both seem good. The clip is very uh, movie. Movie? Is that a word? Um, let me see if it's loose or if that's just how, how it's going to be. You know what I mean? Cause it's in there in my car to, I could tighten it, but it's still kind of movie. It's still movie guys. That is, yeah. Oh, this one is definitely loose. You can see the gap. Ooh, I don't know if you can. Close the gap. I don't know if you can close the gap because of the maybe the contoured scales, but it's still movie. I don't know if these work with uh, Lynch clips or anything. This is nice though. Um, I believe it's a hundred bucks, so it's not like some crazy premium knife where you expect a lot of stuff. That's you know. So the black wash is different. I think theirs is more of a just coating. It's not washed. Maybe I don't know. I guess it depends, but it does look good on that one. And it looks pretty good on that one. I mean, you got some, you know, splotches and stuff in there, but not like anything I would be upset about. Oops. And one thing you got to note, guys, is it's hard to win. <laughs> So, you know, you might get one example that's a little tight in the detent and it goes to a person who just likes lighter detents. <laughs> or you get one that's a little lighter and that person loves stronger detents and it's hard to win. And I'm one of those people. Like, I prefer a stronger detent. So, you know, but I'd say all in all, the three of these um, are pretty much, you know, good to go. I mean, I don't... Lockup seems good. A little bit of side to side, but I mean, that's nothing really. No up and down. That feels good. Lock up. Good. Up and down. No. Side to side. No. Um, stop pin is internal. Internal stop pin. That's nice. Uh, it is on multi-row, so that's something they do. That's something we asked for on the Growler, but they didn't do it. 
on the prototypes, and then we liked the action on the prototypes, so we just stuck with what they had. So, um, oops. But yeah, this one has more of a sort of area style hull, uh, which is nice. It's comfortable in the hand. It's thick. Um, it's a chunker. So, let me grab this. I don't know why the screen's like dark. Like, I don't know if the battery's dying, but. 0.61. Wow, that is thick. I don't know if I've ever had a knife that thick. 0 0.45. 0 0.61. Yeah, you can feel it in the hand, but it's not like. To me, personally, it's not like end of the world thick. It's not. It, it, because of the contouring, it does work, you know? Um,. Yeah, I like the knife, and I like the design. I do. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the stud and hole, but I think they pulled it off here, which is cool. And I do like the hole uh, for flicking. You can get the pinky in there. So definitely a cool knife to check out. And I, I believe White Mountain Knives is their sole uh, dealer in the U.S. So here's what I would say if you're comparing these two. Uh, if you're looking to get something for you know the the most bang for your buck so to speak the growler is going to be a little cheaper with out the door price around 78 bucks um i believe this guy's at 100 so you'd be out the door around 90 dollars on this um if you absolutely hate this clip some people just don't like this clip um i personally like it it as long as it's done right it goes in the pocket really well comes out really well and it's you just don't feel it in your hand. Um, they did a good job on that. And honestly, I thought they couldn't do a wire clip. Pretty sure they told us that when we asked, but apparently they can. Um, but if you're somebody who loves a, a nice sturt, like thick, you know, uh, hand filling knife, this is going to be more up your alley because it's, it's very thick. Um, not going to lie. It's very thick. Uh, weight wise, I'd say this guy's a little bit heavier, not by a ton. This guy's 3.8, I think. Um, this guy's maybe four ounces, something like that. Um, if you want studs, obviously you got studs here. Um, if you don't like the large hole, so here's the thing. A lot of people don't like this larger hole because they can stick their finger in. Well, I can do the same thing here. Um, but I guess you can stick it in and it's still flies out when you put it where this one if you put your finger too far in it kind of catches you because what happens here and this is what people are complaining about on the on the growler is it gives you enough room that when you when you flick your finger comes down and slides out it has this room to up and slide out where on this knife you go up and you just get caught right here right so you have to learn to just kind of put your finger on the edge of the hole like that and flick it once you get used to it i honestly don't have any issue with it or you can just kind of do the the push move kind of thing uh when you're not under a camera but i've gotten it to be extremely reliable i kind of just go at the top of the hole fire just put my finger and kind of flick and it works. Um, but if that's not something you want to deal with or adjust to or whatever, this might be your guy, right? Um, 14C. I'm trying to think of any other differences. If you're left-handed, you might want the growler because it's got a reversible clip. Um, they both have nice choils. They both, honestly, ergonomically are pretty comfortable in the hand. I really love the growler in my hand, but I don't know if that's because I... You know, it's, you know, my knife, I've been carrying it forever. This does feel really good. But again, it is thick. I do like the contouring. Don't like how the clip's moving. That's my biggest gripe so far. Um, and the centering. But you know what? I bet you the more you flick and carry this, it might adjust itself. Tends to happen. Or you could take it apart, like, you know, if you're into that. Um, yeah, that's about it. I think it's a good knife. I think they did a good job here, guys. I see the $100. I know a lot of people go, oh, my God, 14C. We're getting people saying this is overpriced, and I don't think 14C in my Carta for $78 out the door is really overpriced. But, you know, to some people, you can get a Kubi, right, or a Shielded Made knife under their own brand 
for maybe 70 bucks. Like I know Kubi does the uh, hide for around 70 bucks in 14C and G10, right? Uh, I mean, you're only saving like seven bucks there, but sure. Um, but you got to understand we are involved. Like it's our design. So, you know, if you like the design, that's what it's about. Don't buy the knife just because you want 14C in my carta. Then you can go find something cheaper for sure, you know, Civivi or somebody. Um, but if you like our design and our brand and you want to support us, that's why you pay the extra 10 bucks or whatever it is if you want to do those comparisons, right? We have to make some money. You have to remember there's also White Mountain Knives in there um, because they this is an exclusive with them. We went 50-50 on it with them. If anybody's curious our dealer exclusives like that. I call it the dealer partnership program. We go 50-50 on knives. Cost, profit, all of it. Um, same here. This is probably 100 bucks for a couple reasons. Contouring. Oops, sorry. Contouring. Uh, possibly the wire clip over this. Um, usually the wire clip does not save you money when it's when you're talking about a milled, like compared to a milled clip. A lot of people think that, but it's not the case. Um but possibly with a bent steel clip versus a wire clip, probably going to be more expensive to do wire, right? Um, contouring and the wire clip and the fact that this is a Canadian company that has to make money too uh, and sell in the U.S. So you probably have some import stuff going on from Canada. You have a lot of factors there. And I could 100% see that adding up to an extra $15, you know? Um, so do I think this is overpriced? Hell no. Uh, I think this is a good deal. I think it's a good deal. And I think it's a good knife. So I'm glad that I checked these out. Um, it gives me um, it gives me more confidence, honestly, in Shielden because they did a good job on these. Um, at least these two. Let me see how the edges, because, yeah, oh, my God, dude. Their edges are freaking ridiculous. As long as they don't have burrs. We've had some people who have burrs on their edges. This one might have a little bit, but no, man. It's like, dude, literally sticky sharp. Um, the growlers are like, I mean, stupid sharp um, and thin behind the edge. So I could only imagine. So anyway, I apologize. I didn't want to make this some kind of comparison or anything like that. And I'm not sitting here trying to sell my, you know, the growler. I do want you to buy it, obviously, if you like it. I think they might. They should still be in stock at this point. We did a run of 600. Um, but I mainly wanted to compare them personally. And I like to show you guys what I'm doing. I'm very transparent. And, um, yeah, um, it does make me wonder some things. Because um, some knives that we had shouldn't have got past QC on their end. Um, but I only have these two examples and I've seen hundreds of these, right? So, uh, anyway, uh, all in all, both are very well made, good knives. And just like with us, I'm sure if you have any issues with the sleeper, you can hit up White Mountain Knives, you can hit up Canadian Knife Company and you'll be taken care of. Companies like this, that are part of the community. They want you guys to be happy with your knives. It's not just about making money. Um, so... Anyway, there you go. So some shielding made, 14C, Micarta knives, at White Mountain Knives. Go check it out. Link down below. Use Lefty10 if you like. I love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will catch you later.